Greetings, everybody. So glad that you're able to join us for this week's Turnaround Tuesday. It promises to be an amazing one. We've always already had an encounter with a voice that sounded like Darth <laughs> Vader. Not sure where that came from, but we're going to have, it's not Star Wars, we'll have spiritual war that kind of tops and trumps Star Wars any day. Come on. Um, we're really excited about uh, the breakthroughs that God is bringing for this new season. And we're going to explore uh, as in-depth as we can <clears throat> the breakthroughs that is, have come as of Passover. And, and they are made positionally available for you. But it's your job and mine to access those blessings, and access those breakthroughs, and see the manifestation of them. We're going to start off, actually, uh, just in uh, a week in the nation of Israel. We're very, very, very excited about the Spirit of Elijah Israel Tour. Going to be joined by James Nesbitt, Ed Watts, Jamie Fitt. We've heard amazing rumors that uh, our brother from another mother, Chris Mitchell Jr., is joining us. So this will be his first time in Israel, and we have the yes, privilege sir. and honor of introducing him to Israel's finest. He, he, aroma coffee and <laughs> Temple Mount prayer. It'll be exciting. Amen. So, welcome, everybody, again to Turnaround Tuesday. Chris, would you start us off in prayer? Absolutely. So, Father, we are so grateful for your goodness and for your faithfulness. We thank you. For your appointed times, Leviticus 23 tells us that these the feasts that we observe, that we celebrate, they're not just the feast of Israel, but they are your feast. And so we thank you, Father, for these gates in time that you open for us to step in experientially uh, to the measures and depths of breakthrough that you have secured and reserved for your people for all time. So, Lord, we engage you in this Passover season. We thank you for the grace that breaks open that causes the, uh, the barred and, and closed doors to be made open. We thank you for the strong arm of the Lord that is with us in this season to secure breakthrough and to secure deliverance for your people and to move us in positionally into greater possession of the rest that you secured from the foundation of the earth. So we thank you today for that grace. We ask you for utterance, articulation, and wisdom uh, to speak forth your counsel, Lord, so that those that hear may also access and step into experientially this grace that you've afforded to us in this hour. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, I just thank you in this Passover season that the angel... And the blood is protecting us and protecting our, our properties, protecting everything about us, protecting our children. I thank you, Lord, that this is the season that that angel of death must pass over all of yeah. us. And we yeah. live in the valley of Goshen with blessing upon blessing upon yeah. blessing. Thank you, Jesus, that you are blessing our children in Jesus name. Yeah, remember, we take every Tuesday to fast and pray for our children, children in the natural, children in the spirit. Some of us are also praying for our mothers and our fathers, for our colleagues, and that is awesome. But, you know, the, the, the scripture that God gripped our hearts with is, uh, I will contend with the one who contends with you, and I will save your children. The Lord is contending. He's rising up to contend right now, and he is uh, moving in power this Passover to save our children. Another Passover scripture that I think is very significant. I say Passover, <laughs> it's significant all the time, but it, it draws uh, really, really a major focus for, for Jolene and me on Passover. It's uh, Malachi 4, 6. It says that God's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And Elijah comes and the, the forerunner comes, the, the grace and forerunner anointing comes to turn the hearts of the fathers and mothers to their children, children to their mothers and fathers, and turn the hearts of all back to the Lord. That's right. That's what Elijah did when he confronted the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Lord, send your fire that this people may know that you are the Lord and that you have turned their hearts back to you. In, in just about a week, just over a week, we're going to be having a two-day convocation on Mount Carmel. 
uh, with uh, some amazing, amazing leaders, as I mentioned before. And we are going to be praying for the release of the Elijah anointing. We felt since uh, December of 2022 that uh, come Passover, there's going to be a greater dimension of the Elijah anointing, this anointing to turn, this turnaround anointing. There's going to be a greater release of this anointing on a national and global basis. And the Lord instructed us as we were in Israel, uh, he instructed us to return to Israel with a Spirit of Elijah tour. Now, some folks, when they do this uh, Spirit of Elijah stuff, it can go in some unusual directions. But, you know, we want the fullness of the prophetic. We want to move in the Spirit and power of God like Elijah did. First and foremost, our hearts are to see the Lord stretch his arm out and pull our sons and daughters out of captivity and That's return right. them into the full focus on him and relationship with him. We want to see multitudes disengage from Jezebel's table and return to the table of the Lord. With this, we are so excited to have our friend Mario Bramnick with us. Mario, welcome. So glad you, you could join us. It's been a while. It's you were a regular at the uh, uh, at the well for a while, coming up and drinking from the well and pouring forth the word of the Lord. We're so glad that you're back with us today. And uh, I understand you've been really, really uh, touched by the Lord, even with this passage of Malachi 4. Yeah, uh, it's great to be uh, with you guys. Uh, it, it feels like a familia. Uh, John, Jolene, Amen. Chris. Now, is that Italian for family? <laughs> no, it's, it's Hebrew, familia. Oh, it's Hebrew. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, uh, so it, it, as I told you when I spoke to you on the phone, now everyone's talking about Malachi 4 and our children. You guys started a year earlier, and um, I, I said it's, it's pretty lonely um, when you pioneer something, uh, crying in the wilderness a year ago about this Malachi 4, then the Spirit of God hits our kids at Osbury, and all these colleges now are on fire. Now everyone's talking about Malachi 4. Now you can't copyright when you get a prophetic word, but I did, <laughs> I did want to honor you as a forerunner, as forerunners, and also just staying with it all this time. And now we're seeing the fruit of that being born in our nation, right? Mm -hmm. and like It's like the only uh, bright spot uh, with everything else going on politically. So um, it, it's amazing. Uh, now everybody's talking about Malachi 4. And just a couple of notes on that. Um, number one in the Passover setting, right? We have, we all know, we have a place setting for Elijah, right? right? And right. we open the door and sing, Eli, uh, you know, Elijah, the prophet, Eliyahu and Avi, you know, shall you come in on this Passover night? Why? Mm -hmm. Because the rabbis felt that maybe it would be on Passover that the Messiah would come. So let's usher in Elijah during this time. Wow. And there's such a birth pang for the coming of Mashiach, right? And, and that's why the spirit of Elijah is on the face of the earth, doing all that the spirit of Elijah is doing. And the way we kind of ran back around to the Malachi 4 started um, when Osbury started and we're all watching, is this, isn't it, what is it, you know, um, and so forth in a Methodist church, uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Um, the Lord gave me uh, Zechariah 10, ask you of the, uh, for the rain at the time of the latter rain. Cool. So it's the time, it's time. This is the time. But God still says, ask, ask. So he's looking for those that are hungry. He's looking for the watchmen, the intercessors to provoke something on the earth realm, like the dew on the earth realm rising to bring forth the clouds that will bring forth rain. Then uh, we went to Joel 2, that there in that day, there'll be an outpour of the, of the former and latter rain. We, so on the one hand, the, 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 the former uh, rain is in the book of Acts. But I think that this uh, Osbury movement is the beginning of the drizzling. I, 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 Lou then spoke about it. That's kind of a former rain, but it's going to be the former and latter rain. There's a torrential out, a downpour that's about to come. And as you read further on Joel 2, it talks about in that day, I shall restore. Shalem, mm -hmm. bring back to whole mm -hmm. 
all that the enemy has taken, that the locusts have eaten. And then it goes on to say, and I will pour out my spirit upon your sons and daughters, and they shall prophesy and dream dreams, et cetera, et cetera. And then it talks about gloom, about very difficult times on the earth realm. Um, so it's all there. I believe Asbury is kind of a forerunning rain, but there's going to be a torrential downpour and it's going to be sons and daughters and fathers and sons uh, moving in unison together. So it's the restoration of Joel 2. It's the restoration of Malachi 4, right? I shall restore. And there's a wind behind this. So if you're watching and you have a breach with your children, there's a wind behind it. I think it's time oh, to yeah. take something intentional in terms of repentance, humbling ourselves, bring, uh, inviting them over for something, buying your whatever the Holy Spirit tells you. And the same thing with the kids. It, it, it's time to be intentional because there's a wind behind us on this restoration. But then I felt it's not over there because what we're seeing in Asbury, um, it's also an Amos 9 restoration. It's the oh, time man. of restoring the tabernacle of David. And that brings us to the altar of Baal. Um, I, I did a study, I think I mentioned it last year, um, on the government, the role of worship in the governmental arena. David, a worshiper and king, knew the importance of 24-7 and had that tabernacle going on. And I said, imagine if we have a president that appoints uh, uh, co commissioners of worship. Yeah, those, uh, the cabinet of Hallel, the cabinet of praise and the cabinet of thanksgiving and, and the scribes and so forth. And that no matter what enemy came forth, he would release a sound from the earth realm. Well, there's a demonic sound of the prophets of Baal being unleashed. But yeah. the spirit of Elijah is coming again to renew a fresh uh, uh, Judah. We're, we're in the month of Nisan, which is the month of Judah, where praise goes first. Are we going to unite as a body of Christ, are we going to unite fathers and sons and release a sound on the earth realm that's going to break break the sound barrier against the witchcraft, against the witches and warlocks and all the uh, political upheaval that we're seeing? I think it starts with the battle of sound. And I'll just finish. We're still in the decade of pay, which is the battle of sound. Uh, increase of the battle of the demonic sound, but God is giving a fresh authority and a fresh wind to release the sound of heaven on the earth realm to defeat the prophets of Baal. That's so good, Mario. I, I want to pick up just on, on a couple of things that you mentioned, because the Holy Spirit spoke to me during Passover uh, about Ashbury. We are like, this is so exciting. It's finally happening. Where to go? Which way did it go? You know, I mean, we want to see this move of Holy Spirit replicated and multiplied across the nation. And instead of that multiplication, it kind of just went away. And uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me uh, uh, about this Passover, that the horizon you sow into will soon be at your doorstep. And he, he directed me, actually, to go out to the, the Cherry Blossom Festival, which I, we don't usually go. I mean, we look at them from a distance, but uh, up close and personal was pretty exciting. And uh, there's a scripture, Jeremiah actually was told to take a look uh, what do you see, Jeremiah? And Jeremiah said, I see the rod of an almond tree and it's blossoming. And the blossoming of a tree is a first sign of harvest. So the cherry blossoms are basically a first sign of harvest. And um, Jeremiah was told by the Lord, hey, you've seen well, I'm hastening my word to perform it. And I felt like the Lord spoke to me that the, the Asbury revival was like that blossoming. It's a first fruit. It's a first sign of the revival that is at hand. And once that sign appears, the harvest is guaranteed to come. So I, I want to encourage you, we have stepped out in faith together to build infrastructure, to uh, uh, multiply the efforts that we are, are doing, engaging in prayer. We've taken a whole lot of time here in Washington, D.C., just to press into the face of God and pray and pray for our sons and daughters, primarily because we know of the time that is at hand. And we felt like the Lord highlighted Passover 2023 is the time when it actually begins to occur. 
So we're really, really excited about this. Mario, that was a profound word. And I want to agree with you as well about that Amos 9-11 restoration. Uh I bet you many of the people out there have been watching uh, the clock and seeing 9-11, And there's an urgency to that warning from the Lord, I, I believe. I mean... If, if sometimes the Lord quickens time to you. Uh, uh, if, I may, if I may, two things. One, following what you said, it, we need to expect the unexpected in the time because it's time, right? So ask of the rain. That's the role of the intercessor. Yes, that's sir. the watchman. That's what you guys have been doing day in, day out because you know it's time, right? It's like the difference between Braxton Hicks. You know, we've had six kids, so I think I know something about this. Um, when it's time, it's time. We got we, we to go. Something's about to be birthed, right? So a lot of people have their promises that seem to have been delayed. And whether it's with their kids or ministry or finances or health, you know, God says, now's the time. Just ask and receive by faith. Now's the time. But I believe it's going to come in a way that we don't expect it. It's not the usual thing. It's a Methodist school. It's something where one would not expect a move of God or how he's going to come. Yeah, so Mario. you've got to think out of the box. And then lastly, Adam uh, was with us, our last LCI mission, uh, uh, John and Jolene. Unfortunately, you guys had a conflict. We had an amazing time in Guatemala. And it dovetails into Malachi 4. We, we spoke at the Congress for two hours. Cindy was there. Uh, uh, Cheon was there. Lance. Uh, Adam was there with us. Paul Wilbur. We had a delegation, about 40, 45 people. So we literally read the word of God, a prophetic declaration um, at, at the Congress. And at the end, they had a reception. We ended up dancing the hora uh, in the con- uh, halls of Congress. They, they blew the shofar in the Congress, met with the Constitutional Court, met with uh, the president, where was at the presidential palace. But then we, we, we did this uh, apostolic kingdom government consultation at Harold Caballeros' church, who was one of the fathers of national transformation. And we honored him. And I literally, as I was there, I literally felt as if I was standing in this pool of wells of what was dug before. Wow. So not only is God restoring, and I decree over your lives, fathers and sons, your sons and daughters are coming back. Your heart is coming back to the family. Uh, Husbands and wives, restoration of family, spiritual fathers and sons, but fathers of movements. Yes, sir. And yes. sons of movements. Wow. And I, I just end with this, you know, uh, John, you know, during this stuff, we prayed with the uh, President Trump in the White House. The Lord always spoke to us. The team, whether it's father and sons or apostolic team, needs to be a t- humble team. Needs right. to be a team that honors one another. Honor is so critical. And we need to be united. Fathers and sons, we, we're different. In a symphony, um, we don't want only violins, right? It, it, we, I, we don't want people to to come just like we are. But there has to be a harmony, a symphony. One person that's uh, out of out of uh, key will throw off the sound. And honor is so critical in this hour, because honor is the key that will release the blessings. How many children? for whatever reason, hurts and unforgiveness, resentment, pain, are not honoring their fathers. They're closing the gap. They're not able to receive a blessing. Honor is the key to receive the mantles and blessings that God's releasing in this day. Amen. I agree. And, you know, that really goes back to Amos 9-11, too. You can look at it from this perspective because God is honoring the legacy of David. In that day, I will restore the fallen tabernacle of David. And and so the legacy of David to uh, restore covenant with God. He brought the Ark of the Covenant back in. He restored his nation's covenant with God. And then once that alignment was right, he hired worshipers to worship 24 hours a day, seven days a week to welcome the presence of God in. You know, Our worship does not build a throne for the Lord. It doesn't. Our covenant with God, just like David restored the Ark of the Covenant, 
our covenant with God, right alignment with our covenant with God, establishes a throne for the Lord to rest on. Our praise welcomes the Lord onto the throne that we have established through our covenant. So a lot of people uh, may uh, try to worship their way out of things, and that's great, but we have got to be in right alignment with God's covenant, and that's a major part of the tabernacle of David being restored, is seeing his covenant from region to region, state to state, honored and established and repentance for where the covenant has been breached. That's when we're going to see a major, major release of the Spirit of God commensurate with 24-7 worship, binding heaven to earth. Awesome. So I just wanted yeah. to say that, you know, I mean, the, the, the Amos 9, 12, 13, 14 are really, really spectacular because they're all about the harvest that's unleashed in conjunction with this restoration movement. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, the plowman's going to overtake the reaper. God's going to restore the vineyards that were uh, decimated. All of this is in, in, in conjunction with the restoration of uh, uh, worship, intimacy, and uh, warfare, the restoration of the tabernacle of David. We need this desperately, and I believe this is part of the new phase that's coming as we see these principalities and powers restrained, as in the days of Elijah. John, I just really felt an anointing when you talked about the acceleration of Amos 9. And if you can consider just decreeing that over the listeners, that that which they're waiting for with the restoration of their children, they're still not seeing or they're seeing only in part that in this Amos 9 moment, there's going to be just this acceleration towards that. Yeah, that's exactly what we felt, Mario. I'll decree, and we, and we can all decree that. I just wanted to share this morning, I was talking with one of my friends and she's in this whirlwind that God is doing all these things all at the same time. And she told me that a friend of hers had, had sent a prophetic word to her about the compression of time and how we are going into the compression of time right now. And yep. she, she related it to the parable of when Jesus was at the wedding and the, and that, in one moment, the water was water, Come and on. then God compressed time, right. and the water became uh, became wine. And I believe we are in the wow. season of wine right now. God is Amen. stretching every wine skin. He's stretching time, but he's compressing time. And when he stretches the wine skin, he allows it to shrink a little more, and then he compresses it some more. So God is doing two things at the same time. He's stretching us, but he's compressing time. And I felt there was such weight on that word about exactly what God's doing with time right now. He's in one moment is taking all the things we have, all the prayers you put in the vats, all the water, yeah, yeah. all the years of collecting and collecting. Some of yeah. it is collecting hurts, but a lot of it is collecting good things. God's going to tap on those vats that are full of water and he's going to compress time and make wine for you now. So we just decree and declare that the water becomes wine, that it is the season. It is the season of compressing of time. It is a season where the Lord is going to touch that which you've collected, good things and bad. He's going to restore the bad things. He's going to bring overflowing wine out of the vats of what you've collected so far. And I pray that for every one of you in Jesus' name. And in Passover, in one day, 400 years of generational curses were broken. In one day, an entire gen, uh, 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 nation was delivered. In one day, none of the infirmities of the Egyptians were upon them. And in one day, the gold and the silver of Egypt was given to the people of God. It's a time of deliverance of generational curses and, and family iniquities by the power of the Holy Spirit on this Passover. 
And let's not forget that Passover also was the date that was chosen by God for Joshua to cross over and possess the land on the journey that was begun 40 years beforehand. So that's where we are. And Father, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare covenantally and governmentally the rod of the almond tree is a sign to us that you are accelerating your harvest. It is harvest time. You are hastening your word to perform it. We declare it for our sons, our daughters, for our grandchildren, for our mothers, our fathers, for our families. We declare, Father God, that even you are accelerating the anointing on the seed and the harvest of the seed. And the horizon that we have sown into is soon going to be at our doorstep. There's an acceleration of time. Go ahead, Chris. Adam, go ahead. <clears throat> Adam. Well, I just wanted to make a comment about the Amos 9 stuff in the Tabernacle of David. Um, you know, in the Tabernacle of David, there was only two types of offerings ever offered. There was no sin offering in the Tabernacle of David. Um, there was no guilt offering in the Tabernacle of David. There was only burnt offering and peace offerings. And that's important because that revelation of the restoration of Amos 9, 11, Tabernacle of David, isn't about sin and guilt. It's about submission to God and shalom oh. for the earth. And that is the answer to the problem of the Jews and the Gentiles and the conundrum there in Romans 11. That is the answer, according to Jesus' brother in the Council of Jerusalem, for the Jew-Gentile issue is the restoration of the tabernacle of David, the rebuilding of submission to God, and peace. And the peace offering is, is so full of joy. It's what everybody gets to eat. So first you come and submit to God in his presence, and then you declare peace out into the world, and there's joy and there is fellowship. Um, and this, this is part of what um, I saw in Guatemala when I was down there with Mario and walking into the halls of power. Um, and, you know, being here in DC, it was provoked a complete jealousy, wanting to go into our Capitol building and declare and speak. Um, but there's, there was just a spirit of joy. And uh, Mario mentioned that they danced the hora, and I just wanted to play that short little clip of dancing the hora just outside the Congress building in Guatemala. And this made me think of a peace offering, you know, a demonstration in the tabernacle in the house of God that there's joy in the house, and we do this together. So um, just to show you this quick little clip, it's Cindy Jacobs and Mario Bromneck and Acela and some other big famous fancy people dancing. <laughs> outside, just outside in the entry room leading into the Guatemalan Congressional um, Chamber. I guess it's night out. Hey. Adam, I don't know if you could see it, but we actually couldn't see that. You couldn't see that? No. See Play it. it again, Sam. What do you mean you couldn't see it? It's all black. It was black. It was the midnight hour. We can feel it. Can you see this? No. <laughs> no, sir. Still black. Well, your system is being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's our fault. <laughs> Adam, next time we couldn't, couldn't uh, see it, but we could feel it, Adam. Yeah, and Mario, <laughs> next time you you like uh, know you're going to have uh, some dancing in the halls of Congress, let me know. We'll definitely be there for that. All right, <laughs> we'll make the next one, Mario, for sure. Chris Mitchell, there's no video link. Well, oh my goodness, so much. Um, first, I, I just want to say that there's you know. There's so much in this Passover season, and I think um, all of us can attest to it. Uh, there's some things that I discovered and some things that I rediscovered as we've moved through this Passover season. And uh, on this past Friday, when we uh, had our Seder gathering, one of the things that struck me about the gathering was the portion 
where we pause and the children go and seek the Afikomen. And uh, it's a child that discovers uh, what we know uh, in the substance, Colossians 2.17, actually 2.16, uh, talks about the, uh, the, the observance of the feasts and the new moon festivals. And it says all of these things actually point to a substance, to a fulfillment. And Colossians 2.17 says the substance uh, is in Christ. These things are types and shadows, but the substance is in Christ. And so we know in, even in the observance of the feast of the Lord, uh, that are types and shadows of the ultimate reality that we possess in Messiah, that as we're going through uh, the Seder, I'm looking at this whole piece of the children being the ones that go and seek and find the treasure. They find this represent the middle matzah, the one that leaves right. its place of honor amongst the three and, and comes out into the, uh, uh, the familiar of mankind and is discovered by a child. And so I just want to say one of the things that I saw prophetically in this Passover is that there's a revelation, an unveiling of Jesus that's coming to our children. There's in this season, as we move through, there's going to be a rediscovering uh, of who he is uh, in our children and in the generations that are coming. And so that's one thing I just want to prophesy uh, or f uh, to you who are watching, if you have children that are away from the Lord, you have children that seem like they want nothing to do with the things of God. I'm telling you, there is an unveiling. Th those who did not look for him are going to stumble upon him and find him. There is an unveiling of the Son of God, of the treasure uh, of Jesus that is coming to this generation. That is part of the miracle of Passover. It imparts the inheritance and the substance that one generation experience, it opens that door experientially to the next generation and imparts that reality to them. And so I just want to pray that blessing of Passover uh, upon all of us who are watching and upon our children and their children after them, that they would know the riches of the substance of the breakthrough that is, is found in the arm of the Lord, the revealed arm of the Lord, when the prophet Isaiah says, to whom, who has heard our report and believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Come on. And it, those of us who have experienced the delivering power of the arm of the Lord, who is Yeshua HaMashiach, that legacy is for not only for you, not only for me, but it's for our children after us and their children after them. And so that's just one thing that I that I I wanted to uh, share with uh, with everyone. And the other thing, uh, Mario touched on it, Jolene, you touched on it, um, and I'll share this very briefly. Uh, and I think Adam, you even touched on it. And it's this concept of restoration. Jesus said in Matthew seventeen eleven, we're all familiar with. He's discussing the disciples. Just asked him. They said, "Why do the scribes and the Pharisees say that say that Elijah must first come?" And Jesus gives this brief discourse about the spirit of Elijah. And in Matthew 17, 11, he says, Elijah will come, must come, and he will restore all things. A part of the spirit and the anointing of Elijah, that Elijah mantle has the capacity to bring restoration. And Mario talked about a couple of the pieces of restoration that he sees coming forward. And I want to tell you, I want to add one more. Acts 3.21 yes, talks sir. about the, the reality that, that heaven must receive the Messiah until the time of restoration of all things. That dovetails with the spirit of Elijah in the earth forerunning the revealing of Yeshua HaMashiach in power and in glory. That's why Elijah must come first, because he that mantle carries the grace and the anointing of restoration. The restoring of hearts, of fathers and sons, the restoring of, of lost truths and inheritance biblically and scripturally. All of those things are inherent in the spirit of Elijah. And that's why God is releasing this in this hour of history. And the final thing I want to say, you many of you have heard me say this before, but the reality is even with Asbury, that revivals and awakenings the Lord spoke to me years ago. I was asking him about why do we see these revivals come? They're like flashes. They come and they go. And we don't we don't necessarily see the the cultural or uh, uh, political change 
that should be commensurate with that level of a, of a move of God. And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, revivals are like contractions. They are not the thing itself. They're the, they're the thing that points to the thing. They're the sign of something that's to come. So a contraction points to a birthing, but it not only points to the birthing, it prepares the way. It opens up the way for the birthing to occur. And as the contractions become closer and stronger, the birthing or the unveiling of what is to be brought forward, you know that it's imminent. The closer they get together, the, the more frequent they occur and the stronger they become, it points to the birthing forth of a reality. So I just want to say that about what we're experiencing. These are signs that we're going to see the government of the Messiah established in the earth. It's time for us to rejoice, just as Mario said and Jolene said. This is time for us to rejoice and to engage God in these things like we never have before. I got to jump right in on this one. Yes, sir. Because uh, if you go with the Messianic Jewish understanding, Elijah or, or John the Baptist was actually born uh, on Passover on or around Passover, the Passover holiday, the anniversary wow. of the time when uh, Joshua crossed over into the promised land, the anniversary of the time when Moses declared, let my people go. And an entire nation, as Mario said, came out of captivity into freedom. Possibly at the same time that John the Baptist, that Elijah ascended to heaven and uh, Elisha received the mantle. We don't wow. know. But there's indications of that. It's really important to understand this, that John the Baptist, he died a martyr, right? And uh, we know that when Jesus died a martyr, Holy Spirit brooded over that seed and brought forth the harvest of that seed, mm. resurrected Jesus from the dead. And then Holy Spirit was sent wow. into the earth, the whole earth, to secure the seed that had been invested into the ground fallen into the ground and died. <laughs> John the Baptist died a martyr's death as well. And if I asked the Lord, why did John the Baptist die so brutally? And it seemed like out of characteristic for all that was going on. And the Lord said, I chose my choicest seeds, plural, to sow into the ground to accelerate the harvest in the nations of the earth. And I believe that as of Passover 2023, Holy Spirit is brooding again, and he's bringing forth a martyr's harvest for a martyr's seed. He's releasing the spirit of Elijah, the anointing of John the Baptist, to prepare the way of the Lord at a magnitude we can barely comprehend. And, and Malachi defines that release as a hallmark of ministry in the end times. I believe we're in a tremendous, tremendous crossroads where it's almost so as though end time has intersected with real time. Mm. I don't know what that all looks like. Wow. But here we are in this season as prophesied when we picked up the mantle by the Jordan River back in December, December 10th. Jolene had seen Passover 2023 as the time period where what was brought forth initially comes to a much greater expression. Mm. So I'm saying all this to say, Lord, we ask for the Turnaround Tuesday family, yes. for this grace and anointing, the spirit and power of Elijah be released to turn the hearts back to you, to stand in the counsel of God, to pray and decree and see the heavens shut and the heavens yeah. open. Yes. to see economic restoration come, to see life come back into a land that's been devastated and bruised by Jezebel's influence. We declare that the time is at hand where multitudes disengage from Jezebel's table and return to the table of the Lord. We call our sons and daughters into the reality of covenant restoration yes, Jesus. out from the hands of the harsh taskmaster, Jezebel and Baal, in Jesus' name. 
Yeah, it's all about <laughs> hearts being restored in this hour. I yes. Mean, the whole message in Malachi is about hearts being restored. It's a restoration movement. Mm, Even mm. this morning, I woke up to a song that I heard from the Lord. It was a singles in the 1970s, and it was, ooh, child, things are going to get easier. Come on, Jolene. Ooh, child, things are going to get brighter. And all day long, that's just been going round and round wow. in my spirit. And I just declare that over each one of you. Child, the ch even God, wow. you child, ooh, child, your children, things are going to get brighter. Your children, things are going to get easier. And as those things get easier, as God keeps restoring, there's a scripture that says, where is he who will call out restore? And I just declare that again. God is restoring. He's restoring hearts. He's yeah. restoring marriages. He's yeah. restoring life back to people. Passover yes. and the resurrection of Jesus is Shadow all about Lord. stealing from death and declaring life. And that's what we declare. Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Ooh, yeah. child. It's going to get brighter. Mario, I, was gonna get I was about to harmonize with you, Jolene, if you kept going. <laughs> well, we, 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 we meet with the, our men leaders before um, a service, and we were talking about this fatherhood thing and building fathers yeah. and building sons in the church. And I, I forgot one of my leaders was talking. And I said, that's like the Cat Stevens song, Father and Son. Remember that? Yeah. That's in the cradle yeah. and the silver. So we're all going to sing here. <laughs> where the, <laughs> father did, the father didn't have time for the son. And right. the son said, Dad, can we play? And only later, when the father was looking for the son, since the father wasn't there, right. the son said, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I don't have time now. The cat's in the cradle. So we can all sing in, in a symphony, maybe. <laughs> or we'll have Adam lead us. Well, he probably doesn't even know the song. <laughs> yeah, Adam, you may not know any of the songs. It might be before some of our time, you know? <laughs> I, I think we should, should have an album of uh, uh, Turnaround Tuesday's Greatest Hits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mario, just as uh, we're, we're talking here, I'm seeing a vision of you. Standing Ooh. with um, um, kind of fishermen's clothes on the banks of uh, uh, of the ocean, and you're holding out a net, and you're just in awe because it's full of fish. And I saw kind of the curve that, to me, represented Central America, and and into South America. And I feel like the Lord is just bringing you an abundance, abundance wow. of fish, and they're just leaping in the the net that has been, uh, it's almost like they ran to the net, not the other way around. They didn't run from the net, they ran to it. Mm -hmm. And um, immediately I, I saw uh, Israel. It's very interesting because I'm like, oh no, in my mind I'm thinking, he's not going to like freeze the fish to get them to Israel. And it was almost like you were instantaneously transported to the Sea of Galilee, standing there with the fish. And, and and the fish were released into Galilee. Maybe it was the Mediterranean, I don't know, but I just knew it was like an instantaneous flash from Central America to Israel, and there was a release of the fish. I think uh, wow. in times past, there's been some transportation issues or some kind of issues because the apostolic leaders and prophetic leaders, maybe they fried the fish, maybe they froze the fish, but by the time they got to Israel, they really couldn't uh, fully embrace oh. their identity or their the, the beauty of the land. They were part of the frozen chosen. So God's going to supernaturally transport, give you ideas, clarity on how to bring forth even uh, that aliyah that you've been dreaming of and introduce people to Israel in a way that they are uh, strong, vital, and they're vitalized, revitalized, and are able to fully embrace what's going on in the moment. They won't be the frozen cho chosen, and they won't be the fried fish. Awesome. 
And I keep hearing the word, put the net down on the other side. And that's exactly what you've done, Mario. You have come up with new and ingenious ways. You followed the Lord and you oh. haven't gone fishing in the same old ways and the same old places that many people have. Yeah. You put the net down on the other side and it didn't seem reasonable to some it didn't seem reasonable to many but the lord says the harvest is in your boat at this wow. time wow awesome thank you awesome. wow wow okay Amen. well i think i have the torah the horror video can i try again Sure. Yes, sir. <laughs> 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 there. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> We'll put that on the greatest hits too. That alone is worth the price of admission. Wow. You better believe it. Yeah. We will dance the horror in the halls of the U.S. Congress. Amen. Yes. Amen. And rejoice. How about the halls of the Knesset too? Yeah. It's probably been done there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But not by us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wow, this has been a great turnaround Tuesday. Uh, let me just share a few more things briefly. Does anybody else have anything they want to bring forward? Okay, we really appreciate your prayers for Jolene and me, for Chris, uh, and um, the, the team that's going to be uh, moving through the land. I, uh, it's a tenuous time for Israel right now. And we appreciate your prayers for protection and also connections with everybody that uh, the Lord desires for us to connect with. The word of the Lord to be powerful and strong, anointed, uh, accuracy in the prophetic, and above all else, that we in humility make the impact that the Lord desires to, to make with us and through us and completely apart from us too, that the Lord also brings a deposit well. that grows exponentially as we return yes sir and uh you know um several people not just chris but there's a lot of people that are coming for the first time to israel and uh, just pray for chris to fall in love with the land and the people okay i i know how god rolls he's like a proud papa and he just takes us under wing as sons and daughters and kind of shows us around and shows us the the hidden places that you know uh, folks that run too quickly might not even see. So pray for these expressions for everybody on the tour. Uh, pray for us to have the capacity. I'm going to try doing at least one turnaround Tuesday in Israel. That'd be pretty exciting. And uh, we'll try and do a couple, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. We'll have some backups just in case. But it would probably mean dragging Jolene and me, dragging Chris Mitchell out of bed at four in the morning to get in front of a camera and rape <laughs> good luck with that one. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> exactly. It might be John doing turnaround Tuesday yes. all by himself. I'm with that, Jolene. And, no. and <laughs> Mario, you uh back when I went to Jolene and I were headed to Israel to pray for the final ten days of Prime Minister Netanyahu's election back in 2014, 2015. And you prayed a commissioning prayer that yes. literally, I believe, opened up the way for us. It, it, was, it amazing. was one of the first times we met, I think. The second time we met, we wow. had some, I don't even know what we were doing in D.C. You were about to go to Israel, and we prayed that you were going as an ambassador of heaven because there was a lot of concern on the prime minister's election and a lot of tampering. We're not going to get into that right now. For foreign governments tampering in elections, believe it or not. Impossible. And, no, yeah. And and we pray that you would be the Holy Spirit's agent. And I think that they went to sleep believing that they lost the election and they woke up that they won the it was such a supernatural thing. It was a and, turnaround. And 
clearly, uh, you know, I, again, um, I honor you guys, John and Jolene. You are forerunners. And that's Absolutely. why at the beginning, many people don't understand you <laughs> because you're, you are, you are a John the Baptist. You are forerunning and not everybody understands forerunners. Then a year later, oh, that's why he's doing this thing, right? It almost made no sense because everybody was in a different zone, whether fighting, you know, uh, warfare <laughs> or, or looking for revival. And you said, no, we, we've got to come to the basics of this Malachi 4 movement. And then a little less than a year later, we're seeing the sons and daughters coming back to the Lord right. sovereignly. And I know a lot of it is based on your forerunning. So I decree and declare this mission oh, to oh. Israel is not a tour. It's not just another visit, but yes, it's sir. a forerunner deposit oh, of God. the spirit of Elijah for Israel and the nations. And that what comes forth from Zion, the word of the Lord, shall be decreed out of Zion. There's going to be an intercession that's going to come upon you almost stronger than anything else, not just for Zion, but for the nations. You're going to see clearly over America in a way that you haven't seen before and have just this new release of authority for nations, especially for us back here in America. I thank you for John and Jolene and Chris and the team. Father, we just pray a hedge of protection. And Father, we thank you that they are emissaries of heaven to accomplish your will for shift for Israel, the Jewish people, and for America. In Jesus. Amen. I agree. Thank Amen. you, Mario. I totally appreciate that. As a father, as, as an apostolic leader, as a brother, uh, as a dear friend, and as a Messianic Jewish leader yourself, oh. uh, thank you means everything all right well we've had a great uh, week today we really have <laughs> see the compression of time it's, it's all you new go. Bit, you know? <laughs> thank you for joining us mario thank you chris thank you. mitchell jr and uh, god bless you all again thank you for contending for your sons and daughters we are seeing as mario said the first fruit already and it's just the beginning we're seeing this jesus revolution it's it's breaking forth even now but we're going to see a great acceleration of it. The spirit of Elijah is in the land. God bless you. Oh.